Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Griffin Armament GMS. Now if you're not familiar with this particular optic, um, it is kind of a Aimpoint Acro clone, um, or at least a close copy. Form factor wise, it shares a lot more in common with the original Acro P1. It definitely looks a little bit more like that. But as far as the features go, it has a lot more in common with the P2. So it does use a standard Acro footprint. So anything that is cut for Acro or any of the Acro plates out there, this optic will work with. It has a three MOA dot. The one that I have is in red, but they do also make a green model as well. It has an aluminum body. It does take a CR2032 battery, which is kind of the standard at this point. It has a 50,000 hour battery life and it does have a shake awake function. So if you lay the optic down and it stays still for a while, it will shut off. And as soon as you pick the optic back up, it will come back on. Obviously this is an enclosed emitter red dot because it is 2024. Another feature that it has that is very similar to the Acro is it does have a sacrificial lens here in the front. Uh, what I mean by that is a lot of other optics, they just have that normal pane of glass in the front that is at a slight angle. This optic has that as well, but it is set back just a little bit and in front of that, it has another layer of glass that's just offering you extra protection. It has click adjustments on each side that can easily be done with a small screwdriver or a shell casing. They are one MOA adjustments. Um, they're definitely not the most audible. You can't really hear the clicks, but you can definitely feel them. And I had no problem zero in this optic out of the box. Um, in the box, it does come with exactly what you would expect. It comes with the optic itself, comes with a couple small tools, owner's manual and a cleaning cloth. It does also include a optic mount that can go on a AR platform or anything with a Picatinny rail. It is a standard absolute co-witness height. Now I originally did mount this optic to a carbine using the included riser. So let's go ahead and check out the zeroing process on the carbine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and zero the GMS. Um, I roughly zeroed this the other day at 25 yards, got it close enough that I could go ahead and start running some drills and things like that. Um, but now I'm here at 50 yards, going to go ahead and get it zeroed a little bit better. 50 yards is my preferred zero for something like this. Just got some M855 Winchester ammo, so nothing crazy there. I'm going to go ahead and fire a group, see how close we are, and go from there. All right, let's check it out. All right, we've got two right in the center, one over to the right. So uh, not too mad about that for right now. Definitely uh, pretty close already. I'm gonna go ahead and fire another group over here. This time we'll do five rounds and see where we're at. Um, for what I'm gonna be doing with this optic, I think this is gonna be good enough for now, but we'll confirm on this target. All right, there is my group. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Like I said, nothing too crazy, but for my eyesight, I'll take it. Uh, probably about an inch and a half group, so nothing special. Uh, as far as zeroing goes, pretty happy with this optic. I zeroed it the other day, as I mentioned, at 25 yards. When I first mounted it up, it was only a couple inches off made a couple quick adjustments and this is where I had left it. And now I have confirmed here at 50 and for now, it's good to go. Now after getting it zeroed, I did leave it on that carbine for about 400 rounds. I just did my normal shooting with it, just running a wide variety of different drills at different distances and I didn't have any issues. Before I pulled it off the carbine, I did go back again and confirm zero just to make sure nothing had moved and the zero was exactly where I left it. So after that, I pulled it off and I did mount it up to this Glock 34. So this is a factory MOS Glock 34 and I have the optic mounted using a CNH precision plate which is made for the Acro, which is the footprint that this optic uses. So let's take a look at the zeroing on the Glock 34. Very similar to what we did with the carbine, um, I've now got the GMS mounted up to a Glock 34. I zeroed this thing roughly the other day. Um, I just got it kind of hit in center of steel at about 10 or 15 yards. Now I'm at 25 yards. I've got a B8 set up. I'm going to go ahead and fire a five round group. 
and confirm slash check my zero. All right, that's five rounds. So we'll go ahead and go down range and see what we got. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm shooting the cheapest of the cheap when it comes to ammo. This is just Freedom Munitions, remanufactured, 115 grain. And here is my group. We got three in the 10 ring, two in the nine. Not that great, uh, but with the amount of caffeine that I've had today, I'll take it. And I definitely say that she is zeroed. So after I run a few hundred rounds through the gun, I'll come back and reconfirm this zero just to make sure nothing has moved or shifted. So that was definitely not the most precise zero. Um, I had had a lot of caffeine that day, but I was at least able to keep them roughly in a B8 approximately where I wanted them at least but it was good enough that I could go ahead and continue the testing on this optic so just as we did with carbine um, I just continued to do my normal shooting and training I did put about 600 rounds through this Glock 34 using this optic so 600 rounds pistol 400 rounds rifle uh, I have roughly a thousand rounds behind this optic I may have already mentioned this I don't consider this a review um, this is basically a glorified unboxing in my opinion um, yes, I have a thousand rounds behind it, but in the grand scheme of things, that's really not that much. Um, and it's definitely not enough to really tell everything there is to know about an optic like this. Um, I have acros, several acros, and I have four or five times that number. Um, I know I have one acro that has almost 10,000 rounds through it, so I have a lot more time behind that particular optic. Um, if you're interested in a acro, I also do have a video going over my experience with that optic. I'll link it down below. Uh, that video is about a year old at this time but everything i said about the optic at that time it still holds up today and i still really like the acro but today we're talking about the gms so on the pistol i had absolutely no problems um, i witness marked the plate when i mounted it up and i also witness marked here on the screw that actually holds the optic nothing moved nothing shifted after just running my normal drills and doing my normal training um, i had absolutely no problems with this optic and I did just finish confirming zero on this optic literally just a few minutes ago to make sure it had held and the zero was right where I left it. And I'm pleased to say I haven't had as much caffeine today, so my group was at least a little better. From my testing so far, I definitely think this is a decent optic, especially when you consider the price point. Um, everything seems to work as it should. Now, obviously, I haven't tested that battery life to its full extent because I haven't had it five years. Uh, but I have had this thing on since I originally got it, which was about five and a half months ago, and it's still going strong on the original battery. The glass on the optic is definitely clear. Um, I would put it on par with something like a Holosun 509T. Um, it's definitely not aim point clear, but at this price point, it is more than acceptable. Um, I did run the optic just a little bit under nods, only about 50 or 75 rounds, so nothing crazy. I just wanted to get a feel for it. And uh, it's definitely usable under night vision, but it's definitely not the most clear out there, but it can definitely work. All things considered, I really don't have any big complaints with this optic, except one. Always has to be at least one. Um, you may notice that I'm running the gun right now in a T-Rex Arms Ragnarok. Uh, this is a really good holster if you want something passive. Um, I generally don't really like passive holsters, uh, but that is just my preference. And my one complaint is, this won't fit in my safari land it will go in if i force it like this it, it, it didn't quite lock in i have to really force it obviously that is not going to work and the reason it won't go in is because of the battery tray so the battery tray on this optic sticks out just a little bit um, functionally wise absolutely does not bother me a lot of people will make a big deal because you can see that you're supposed to be looking at your target when you run a red dot, so I don't really know why you're seeing that. But it doesn't bother me when I'm shooting. Definitely doesn't bother me on carbine. Um, but it does bother me because I can't use my favorite holster, a safari land. So that is the one con that I have with this optic. It doesn't fit in my specific safari land. Now there's a million different safari lands. Uh, I will annotate the number of mine somewhere right here. Their numbering system is super confusing. I don't even remember exactly, but I do remember that this one is for a Glock 34, and it is made for the ones with the optic. Um, all of my Acros and 509Ts, they work in this same Safari land just fine. So this is actually the first optic that I found that won't fit.
Now there very well may be a Safari Land out there that will fit this optic. I just don't know exactly what it is. Um, and that probably won't be a big deal for most of you if you're running this thing from concealment or if you're running in a passive holster like this or maybe a different Safari Land. It should work fine, but it's just something to be aware of going into this optic. All in all, I do really like this optic and I would recommend it, especially if you are on somewhat of a budget, but you are wanting something in the acro footprint that is an enclosed emitter. It definitely seems to be a solid option, especially for that price. The testing will continue. Um, as I mentioned before, I see this more as an evaluation, basically a glorified unboxing. Uh, a thousand rounds is not enough time to do a real review and five months definitely isn't. So in the future, if I have any problems with this thing, if it breaks or the glass cracks or it stops working or anything like that, I'll definitely come back and let you guys know. If you're seeing this video in the future, you can check the description and see if I have done an update on this optic. Uh, in this case, no news is good news. If you don't see an update on this optic six or 12 months from now, that means it's still going strong. If you have any questions about the optic or anything that I didn't cover, feel free to contact me. There's several ways you can do that. My email is down in the description, and you can also get me over on Instagram and Facebook as well. And if you're not following me in those places, I would appreciate it. I post a lot more content on Instagram and on Facebook than I do here on YouTube, so you might want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching. See y'all next time. One twenty two Billy at fifteen yards. Target already had some hits, but now it's got some more. 